start over again. Sabrina Zeiter, Chief, um, I work at the Chief Information Office of the Goethe University Frankfurt and I'm responsible there for digitization and educational settings. Um, I do that more on a strategical um, structural level. Before that, I was working as um, the project lead coordinator of um, uh, an educational development project, which is called, or it's still called, uh, Digital Digital Teaching and Learning Lab. And um, I'm going to talk about my experience during um, that project, which is that or what nobody really wants to talk about um, in my experience and what made me feel like I'm managing the unknown. So let's start. Um, before we start with the content, I'd like to set a baseline. Um, what we're talking about is student projects or student participation and how to facilitate them. So the objective um, didn't used to be that we want um, students to participate, to be active um, contributors to the educational settings. That wasn't the objective. They were the objects of our educational efforts. They um, were recipients and uh, to consume what we were serving them. That used to be um, the objective within educational settings for quite a long time. It isn't the objective anymore. Now, what we want is we want to um, include students in the educational developments that take place. We want them to participate actively in the process. Uh, we want their opinion. We want their active participation. We want them not to have this uh, framework or yeah, this behavior of being just consumers, but actively um, developing with us and um, taking yeah, well, taking action within their educational journey and within the educational development that we in higher education or in education general in general um, are focusing on. But um, for that, or we need for that an inducive framework, which we don't have. Uh, there have been hardly any structural changes or um, there is barely an appropriate regulatory framework for student participation. Um, even though we have changed our objective, we have failed to uh, rework all the, um, well, yeah, applied regulatory frameworks. Another challenge in this is, aside from the missing frameworks, that um, the main focus of students, of course, is not to help us um, further develop education. It's not um, their main goal during their studies. I focus um, mostly on higher education, but this would also apply, of course, uh, to other fields of educational development. So for students, their main focus is their degree program. They're working towards um, becoming um, or towards the labor market. They want to um, further their careers. So they need um, credit points. They're working towards degrees or certificates. Of course, there are some students that um, maybe even a lot that um, study for study's sake, but um, I'm focusing on the majority and not on individual um, special cases that have a different um, objective for their studies. So we, um, aside from that, we also face some core challenges when we want to facilitate active student participation. One of them is experience. So of course, students are not trained in writing proposals or project plans and um, following through uh, application processes for project funding and grants and things like that. That is not part of their daily um, um, studies. It's not part of their education so far. It has mostly not been part of their education. So they lack knowledge that others, such as research assistants or professors who, they're, um, who are faced with all these challenges, um, not on a daily basis, but um, on a more regular basis, um, and might even have had training in that. And there are workshops and trainings offered to that specific group, 
but there are less or hardly any for students. So they're at a disadvantage when it comes to competing with professors or um, research assistants and researchers in general. Also the workload. So if you want to apply for a project, if you have a great idea and you want it see you want to see it implemented, you have to get um, usually you need grants, you need funds to make it happen. And you um, have to go through application processes. You have to plan and develop and flesh out your project ideas. And um, all these things are extracurricular activities or even worse, they're considered leisure time. So you do that not during your studies. They are not part of your studies for most degree programs. Um, you use them on top of everything that you have to do anyways. And that can negatively influence your actual studies as well, because if you're um, invested in a project, you might put a lot of time and effort into it. So even participating, even if you're not the uh, inventor um, or yeah, the innovator, um, even participating in the innovation process of a different project that you haven't initiated, even that is taking up a lot of your time and um, you have a lot of workload that is on top of what you actually have to do for your degree program. And that time and effort is usually or seldom is it compensated. So usually you don't get any, as a student, you don't get any money for that. You, again, have to do that in your free time without getting money. Plus, um, like I already mentioned, the rules and regulations prohibit a lot of constructs. So um, there are a lot of pitfalls when it comes to student projects um, because of rules are not designed to support and facilitate these kinds of projects. I will go into more detail in a second when it when we come to a case study from Digitel, the Digital Teaching and Learning Lab, which is, I think I didn't mention that, funded by Steel, And it's still going on till 20, December 2025. So the onset for this project, because I'm not um, sure, I think not all of you will be familiar with this project. So the onset of this project is, or the main goal is that uh, within that project, um, we want to develop new digital learning designs that are developed within a specific faculty or degree program and then are um, on a meta level serve as a template so that they can be transferred to other degree programs or other faculties or even rolled out throughout the university if um, the learning design um, is designed that way so that that is that would be supported. To achieve that within the general framework of Digital, there were two funding phases for which we had call, um, calls for proposals. And students were, because we wanted to support student uh, participation and student projects, students were eligible to apply for project grants. A, a grant um, was comprised of um, a research assistant position uh, part time, so 20 hours a week and also up to 30 hours a month of um, support by a student assistant or a tutor. So you could uh, hire a student assistant or a tutor or something like that to support you. When you look at structurally at projects like that, they work as follows. You have a project initiator, uh, an in innovator, somebody who has the idea, fleshes it out, and is then later um, applies for the grant and gets accepted, and then is the project lead, which usually includes lead, meaning you uh, have you're the superior within the project, you have disciplinary power. This is not always the case. In some cases, um, the project lead is not necessarily, um, it does not necessarily have disciplinary power. So there are lateral constructs. However, um, you at least have uh, control over the project development. So at least in that term, uh, in that um, term, you are the superior within the project. And there is usually no hierarchy or not a big hierarchy gap. 
So you are usually employed by the university and compensated for your workload, which means like you work there, you develop the idea um, during your working hours and you are um, you don't have to do that in your leisure time. You also get supported, so um, all the material, everything you need, your equipment, everything is supplied by the university. And um, you also have the right to initiate procedures. So you can make formal requests, you can um, do proposals uh, or um, start application process or apply for things yourself. It doesn't matter what um, specific field it is. You also can start hiring pro uh, processes or um, start with the recruitment process and things like that. You know the rules and regulations and how to um, navigate within them, or at least you know who to ask and uh, you have the right to actually start them. On top of that, you usually have an expert standing within the scientific community or you're working towards that and you have some kind of standing within the scientific community, have maybe published things and are, um, have therefore reputation and respect. And you have access to additional resources that I already mentioned. So you have an office, you have supplies, office supplies or other supplies, or you can uh, acquire them, you can apply for them. You have a technical device such as a computer, just even a computer or whatever, uh, printer, access to printers or um, software or whatever. You have all these um, support uh, resources that uh, are available to you. That is the usual case when we don't have student initiated projects, but uh, researcher initiated projects. For students, the situation is a bit different. They usually have no disciplinary power over any staff because um, they're not even of the personnel structure. They're not even part of that. So um, they're not considered uh, within that hierarchy in any form. And even if they were, there would be a hierarchy gap, which I will come to in a second. So because of that, you have uh, also no legal rights in the system. You cannot um, initiate the recruitment process. You have to have somebody who does that for you. You cannot um, formally choose the uh, person that is supposed to be the staff on your project because you don't have the legal right. Of course, somebody can grant you um, that right or um, exercise it in the form that you want it to be exercised. However, that is um, their good graces that they do that and uh, you don't have the right and you cannot um, force anybody to do that. So it's just um, you have no rights at all. You cannot initiate or implement contractual work. So the hiring process is, again, not um, within your rights. You have to have somebody who does that for you. You are dependent from, uh, on somebody else. Additionally, you um, have the already mentioned hierarchical issues. So the project staff are usually research associates um, and you are a student and you're the lead of the project. So there is this reputational uh, and also, um, well, the years of experience are different. And um, here again, there can issues arise. It doesn't need to be this way, but it can happen and it can be tricky when it comes to communicating a miscommunication or when there are conflicts, then you have no legal rights or you cannot really, um, well, solve them by yourself. So if you cannot tell the research associate what they have to do, um, you need somebody else to support you in that. Otherwise, they can just disregard whatever you want. Um, I'm, like I said, in general, this hasn't happened and it wasn't like that but we did have some conflicts that arose and that we had to mediate. Um, additionally, the student lead could be the student assistant. They could choose to um, take this position within their projects, and then they would at least be compensated financially. However, then you have the research associate who is your superior and has um, gives you um, your work and tells you what to do. Um, but you're the, the project lead, which you see is a double problem. 
Also, if you choose not to take on the student assistant um, job, and even if the situation is really positive and um, you're accepted as student lead, even if it's not your legal right, you're still accepted and um, the project uh, follows uh, the way that you lay out and everything, um, you're not compensated financially for your work, for your time, for your effort. You do that all in your free time and you have you don't get uh, credit points, you get nothing basically. You do that out of uh, the goodness of your heart, basically out of sheer interest. And that does not seem fair or is definitely not fair. Also, you have no or just limited access to all the additional resources that um, general staff at the university has access to. You're less um, also familiar with all the structures and how to actually uh, get access to something, even if there are ways that you could acquire um, resources. It's Tr tricky for students to know how to navigate the bureaucra bureaucracy of uh, universities. Um, because of all that, within Digitel, we try to, well, we had two funding phases, like I said, and the first one, we basically ran um, head on into a lot of roadblocks when it came to student participation. Things that we in our um, mind didn't think about because we were like, yeah, we want them and we give them the same rights and everything and um, didn't stop to consider the legal implications of what we wanted to do. So um, we ran into these roadblocks and um, had to find solutions for all the obstacles that students had to overcome to actually be part of our project and to be a productive members within that without being kind of like slave labor because they didn't get anything out of it except of experience which is noble but not everybody can afford that and we we wanted to be an inclusive project so what we did was we implemented all these um, support structures that you see here, and I am um, I'm talking about them in a bit more detail on the next slide. So like a writing workshop, job opportunity that I already mentioned, counseling, informative handouts, staff guidance, and individual support. All these things, not all these things were 100% only done for students. A lot of these things we offered for the uh, staff as well, but when we offered it to students, it was catered to their individual needs or the need of this group. So what did we do? We offered um, student-specific support for, for the application process, so a writing workshop, how to, um, how to uh, basically how to write applications, how to um, write project um, plans, how to, um, what kind of language to use. And within the workshop that we offered, which was free, and also they had, um, I am aware that they had to offer their time and we didn't give them any compensation for that. Um, we uh, wanted to make this process um, or shape this process in a way that they would go out of this workshop with having almost done all the work for the application process so that they wouldn't have too much more effort to put into that and a fighting chance against all the other researchers that have more experience. Also, um, for the second funding phase, we made um, associative staff or uh, faculty man mandatory because um, of all the legal procedures and the work that was um, required. And we didn't want them, A, to be the ones that had to do all this or fight through all the bureaucracy and B, like I said, they didn't have the legal rights. So we wanted to have teams that are aware of the situation and can work together and that support the students so that they don't um, have to go through all those hoops or jump through all those hoops alone. Um, which is not to say that we then didn't have any student-led projects. I'll come to that. Um, we also, like I said, had the option of a student assistant position that would be um, with its own issues that I already mentioned, but still it was an option. Yes, I will give uh, an example in a little bit of a student um, initiated project. Um, we also had specific cases where we had um, 
students elevated to the research assistant position, there were a lot of uh, issues and obstacles we had to overcome. And this project was actually delayed by uh, almost half a year because of that. So um, it wasn't easy, but we made it possible so that we had an all students uh, project, which did not have any of the other issues that I um, talked about before. But to do that, there are specific uh, situations and um, yeah, specific things that need to be um, present for it to actually work. It wasn't easy. So uh, the student we had here had um, expertise from before he studied, which uh, made him eligible for this position. He didn't um, have, um, uh, he wasn't finished with his degree, but he was eligible because he had work experience in that field. And that's why he could um, become the research assistant. So what would be steps forward? I'm going to hurry a bit so that we have time to answer your questions. Um, in my opinion, we have to have, it's very obvious, rewards and incentives. We need to award students um, credit points, certificates, grades, uh, or time for all their effort. Um, if we want them to be part of our educational development projects, they have to be rewarded. It is not fair to not do that. We need frameworks, new frameworks, and this is not something that we can only do at university level. This is also something that is political. So there need to be new regulations. It's also a political will to have more students involved or students involved in more projects and in the educational process. So we have to create or politics have to create, politicians have to create new regulations for that. So that it's like on the university level, we can do it with study regulations modules, including um, CPs for all this type of project work, not like, um, well, topic specific for the degree program, but um, overarching projects that um, address education in general. So for these kinds of projects, we have to have uh, that we can do in the at the university level. However, when it comes to um, the legal frameworks, when it comes to uh, personnel uh, rights and things like that, we have to find a way to include students within those frameworks and to like a niche where in which they can work and have legal rights and are not just um, well have to suffer through whatever uh, somebody is gracious enough to give them. And also time allowance for uh, these extracurricular activities, because uh, let's face it, this is time that they are not spending studying. And that in Germany, especially is with BAföG, if, I, I hope you know what that means, in Regelstudienzeit, it can be a big issue. And also what we did in Digital, so we did it like have workshops, have um, support systems to uh, facilitate um, student participation. So, okay, if you want to stay in touch, uh, leave that on. But other than that, um, thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer all your questions.